So in this video, we will be actually hosting the service that we just built locally on Azure. For that, you will need an Azure account. Azure account, as I said, is totally free. If you're not really hosting big production scale applications, you can test your applications for free. But for that, you will have to sign up for the first time if you don't have that account already. For the interest of time, I'm not showing you how to register for an Azure account. Hit on register and trust me, it's very easy. You just do next, next, give some information and you are done. If you're doing for the first time, you will get services free for one year. After one year, it will tell you to go to a pay as you go model. But even on pay as you go model, whatever we are going to do is not going to cost you a penny. So you need to log in to the Azure account once your account is set up. Once you log in, you will be brought to the dashboard and this is how it looks. So at this point, what we are going to do is we are going to create an app service. So you go to your menu bar here and go to app services. In app services, as you can see, I don't have anything. I will do create app service. So in create web app, my subscription is pay as you go. You may get something different here if you are using the free one year service, but don't worry about that. In resource group, if you are doing it for the first time, you might not have any resource group. So I wanted to show you that you will do a create new. So resource group is nothing but a group of resources. Your app might need a database, might need a network connection, might need a VPN connection and so on and so forth. Right. So those resources are clubbed under one group. This is a logical grouping of resources. So you need to have at least one resource group to run your applications. So here I will say my dev resources so now you need to give a name to this web app so let us call it alexa birthday tracker be so i'm giving it the same name as my backend application in the publish keep it code runtime stack you need to select dotnet 5 that's what we selected for our project as well here you can keep it windows region try to choose something which is closer to you i will keep it central us doesn't matter that much now windows plan you can keep it like this what is important is sq and size if you are in pay as you go if you have used your one year of free service you need to change this if you don't change it it will stay start taking money from you this is important so you need to select this chain size and go to dev and test tab and select this so this f1 is actually a free sku or a free tier of applications you select this here so now you can see it's free f1 it will not charge you a penny now you say review and create so now it will create the web application in the back end as you can see the estimated price is free so we are all set here Finally, after the review is done, you need to hit on the create button to actually start the deployment. Now, our code is not getting deployed yet. This is just creating the container where you will deploy your code. So this deployment process might take a few minutes because Azure does it in the back end, but normally it completes within two to three minutes. So we'll wait for that. So now our deployment is complete. What we will do is we will go back to our .NET code here. We already tested our application and it was running fine on your local machine. So what we'll do is we'll select the project here, right click and publish. In publish, you need to select the target as Azure because that's why we are going to deploy this. Hit next, then you will select Azure web service and we had selected Windows as the operating system there. So we'll select that and hit next. One thing to remember, if you are not signed in to Visual Studio, you need to do that with the Microsoft account that you just created. I'm already signed in. So it will search for my subscription name and it will load it by default. So now you can see my resource group is here. Under that, I have the application placeholder that I just created. Hit next. In API management, you can skip that step. You don't need it. Finish. Once you do finish, so once you hit the publish button here, the deployment starts and now your code is getting pushed towards you. So now in the output window, you can see that the publish is complete and it is hosted here. It just restarts the web application. So hold on for that. Then the browser window automatically opens up. However, you can see that it's not loading the Swagger page that we had. Even if you put Swagger here, it will not work. The reason for that is if you come to your startup file again, it is configured in a way that Swagger will be only used if it is in development environment. But once you deploy, it treats it as a production environment. So I will comment these lines of code so that Swagger is always available because we are going to test that on Azure as well. So once we do this, I will have to deploy this once again. Right click, publish, publish. You need to just type Swagger here 
and this time it will work so here you go so we can see that we have our api method also which we'll be using with the alexa skill so we'll try it out here we'll copy this one more time paste it here and the response is hello it works so our application is now successfully deployed on azure so now next we will link this backend to the alexa skill that we are developing remember you cannot copy this swagger url and give it there right we need to access the exact api so the api can be accessed using this path request url copy this request url and now head back to the developer console in amazon go to build here in endpoint click on endpoint by default aws lambda is selected we will change that to https here copy paste the url which you just took in the ssl certificate type drop down select the second option which tells that your endpoint is basically a subdomain by subdomain what we mean is you are actually under azurewebsites.net and the ssl certificate is provided by azure itself so we will select that option so along with the default region i would say just go ahead and copy paste this in all other regions as well this might not be needed but i had some difficulties when i did not do that so i will do that anyways save endpoint so now your skill manifest is saved go back to build again and rebuild it one more time so the build was successful now we'll head back to test again now what we'll do is we'll start the skill again start birthday tracker hello, hello this works. works now see this time it did not say that it just started the application it actually gave the response that your backend actually send it back to you and that's exactly what we wanted so our basic skill template is ready and our basic backend is ready and they are talking to each other that's great progress the mic option also works so you need to just click and hold and issue the command start birthday tracker hello, hello this, this works. works so this also works so at this point it is also a good idea to actually go ahead and install the alexa app on your smartphone and connect it with the same amazon account and give it a shot there as well so how to test it there let me show you so i'll be using alexa on my iphone so i need to tap to talk here start birthday tracker hello this works so as you can hear it works just make sure that you are logged in to the same amazon account and now at this point you can test it on your phone as well as on echo devices but the only thing that it will keep saying is hello it works because what we are doing is whatever request alexa might be sending you you are responding saying the same thing hello this works so in the next part now we will see that how we will handle actual intents and we will start working on our first intent which is the next birthday intent